What's going on guys? Derek here from Williston Audio Labs. Today we're going to look at a four channel version of the Top Strong Gear. Yes, we recently tested the Monoblock TSG 1100.1. It was kind of uh, impressive for what it was. So we figured why the heck not try the four channel model out because you guys wanted to see it. So what's up with this four channel model? It says 800 watts times four at one ohm. What? What? 500 watts times four at two ohms or 250 times four at four ohms. Now this is a $140 amplifier or $130 at the time of the video. Ain't no way. I'm sorry. Well, let's take a closer look and maybe we can figure out what in the heck they mean by these ratings. Let's open up the box and see. Here's the manual. There's those numbers I just showed you. Zoomed up. Comes with some mounting hardware and the amplifier itself. That is it, my friends. Now we'll get out the trusty old tape measure and check the dimensions. 9 inches on the long side from speaker terminal to power terminal, 6.25 inches on the width, and 2.75 inches on the height. Now the width and the height are the same as the mono block that we tested before, so if you get both of these amps they kind of look good together. The amplifier has four RCA input jacks, and it has controls for each of the two channels that are the same. It has a high pass filter, a low pass filter, a gain control, the crossover, which controls high pass, flat, which means bypass, no crossover, or a low pass filter and a band pass. Now, channels three and four also have a variable bass boost, so you can pump up the bass. There's a power, protect, and clip LED light, and then the eight outputs for the four speakers, which you can also bridge the amplifier. We'll show you that later. On the opposite end, we have four gauge for power and ground, and then 8-gauge for remote in, because you know everybody needs 8-gauge for your remote. Right? Right. So you guys asked me before, who in the heck is Top Strong Gear and how do you find this stuff? Well, the truth be told, anybody can get an amplifier from a Chinese OEM manufacturer and slap their name on it. You big dummy! All right, next up, we're going to fire up the good old trusty amplifier dyno so we can test the power output of this Jewel. Now, what you need to realize is, first off, you got to smack me a thumbs up and check the link in the video description so you get some merch. That's right. First up, we're going to start with a four-channel test. We're measuring two, but we're loading all four. We're going to try the four-ohm test in the four-channel mode. It's rated 250 watts. It says 250 by four, but we're not sure about that. The channels one and two are connected to the dyno, and channels three and four are connected to load resistors at the same load that we're testing. First up, certified at four ohms. What are we gonna get? Here we go, 77 and 72. Using Ninja Fast Speed, we can rewire the dyno here to the dynamic mode. And not much difference here. 78, 79, and 76 watts at 14.42. And it just bumped up a little bit there. The efficiency was not good at four ohms, which is uh, unimpressive, 53%. Now let's try two ohms in the four channel mode. Again, it says 500 watts star four. We think that means times four, but we then later we're gonna figure out it's 500 watts total. 137 and 130. Again, this is per channel. So that's not bad power for a four channel amplifier that costs 130 bucks. And here's the dynamic power. This is one kilohertz test, 144, 139. As far as efficiency goes, we measured 71%. It's actually better at 2 ohms. That didn't make a lot of sense. But uh, anyway, let's keep going. 1 ohm in the 4 channel mode. 800 watts. Let's see what we get here. Certified test takes us up to 1% THD. 233 and 221. Again, that's about 225 watts times 4 up to 1% THD. Dynamically... One kilohertz, over 250 watts per channel. That's good, 14.46 volts. So yeah, it's good numbers. Just again, the confusing ratings they provide, that's why we test amps here. And check this out, 85% efficient at one ohm? What? Something don't make sense here. Now let's try the bridge test. We're gonna bridge down four channels to two, and you can see here we use the left plus and the right minus of channels one and two, and then channels three and four. Everything's connected up to the dyno, so we're gonna see everything measured here. 
Now they don't give us any measurements for these bridge tests, or they don't give us any ratings, I should say. So we're gonna have to figure it out ourselves. 288 and 285 at four ohms, 14.5. So that's well over 500 watts. And dynamically, look at this, we get almost 600 watts total, 295 and 302, 14.54. Efficiency 83%, four ohms bridged. That's good. Two ohms bridged, again, no ratings are provided from the manufacturer and we can't call them because they don't have a phone number because they're Amazon Blue Light Special. So uh, certified 456, 453, that's over 900 watts. Certified, two ohms bridged. Uncertified, we're expecting a little bit more. And it's actually right about the same. <laughs> a little over 900, 907 watts there. Dynamically, let's send a one kilohertz pulse into the amp and I do not recommend you listen to a one kilohertz pulse because it will hurt your ears very badly. 485 and 480, 14.48. 71% efficient at two ohms bridge. We like that, it's not bad at all. Now the results, I would say it's impressive for the money. Now you guys just saw most of the test here. We're gonna show a couple extra ones at the very end if you stick around. But uh, yeah, it's about 75 watts by four at four ohms. 135 by 4 at 2 ohms, 233 by 4 at 1 ohm. So good power. All right, for the do it bump dough section, we're going to do full range with bookshelf speakers. Here we go. All right, let's try this Top Strong Gear 4 channel. Let's try a Mazer or Laser. Have the bookshelf speakers here bridged and the amp running full range. hooked up we have the amp bridge still so each one of these is six ohms so it should be seeing three ohms bridge let's try out luck witch I did some additional tests in the three channel mode with the channels three and four going to the subwoofer, but somehow I lost the clips. So I apologize for that. It actually sounded pretty good on the sub. It sounded pretty good overall. I was impressed. Now let's check out what's inside amp guts and chestnuts. <laughs> Flip it over. There are four screws, Phillips head screws on the bottom. We will take those out. And then we will pry the bottom panel off like a boss and check out the internals. What's really interesting here, and it may be hard to see, 3300 microfarad 50 volt Nichicons? I think they may be fake. <laughs> but what we noticed is the Sundown SFB 200.4, very similar in the output power that we received from this amp. So I think this is a clone of that particular amplifier. 
Let's talk about the good stuff. First off, it's inexpensive. It's similar to the Sundown SFB. Stable at 1 ohm stereo or 2 ohms bridged. It has decent efficiency. It has bandpass crossovers for some extra flexibility and has a high pass or a subsonic filter, however you want to use it. Things that could be better, the confusing power ratings for sure. There's also no remote bass control included. The brand stigma, who's top strong gear, good luck finding some support. Email Amazon, you might get some help, I doubt it. Price fluctuation and availability, who knows? All right, guys, there you have my test of the Top Strong Gear 4 channel. You guys wanted to see it. Again, power's not too bad for the money, but is it going to be available? Is there going to be support? I don't know. I just test these amps to find out what they do. Appreciate you guys always for watching, commenting, liking my video. Make sure you subscribe if you like this content. Special thanks to Stuart, Travis, Jesus, Tomcat. This is Big D. I'm out of here. Top Strong Gear 4 channel. I have it bridged 4 ohms and I wanted to try 40 hertz test to see what we get here. Let's try certified first. Alright, 244 and 243. Right at 14.4 volts. And let's try dynamic. Dynamic 40 hertz, 4 ohms bridged. All right, 288, 277.